This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. We are now recording. I'd like to call the to order the meeting of the East Hampton Historical Commission. It's uh, November 9th, 6.33. Um, uh, first order of business, public speak. Anyone from the public that would like to speak? If you're on Google Meet, just uh, turn your video on and start talking. Doesn't seem, doesn't seem like it. You got one person there? Oh, yeah, there's one person, but. I'm on Google Meet. This is Michael with Associated Builders. I'm uh, available. I just don't have video. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's, there's no public speak. Uh, I'd like to open the hearing on the matter of uh, 29 Union Street and the uh, Community for Human Development, Center for Human Development. I'm sorry. Uh, like to state your case. Sure. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Felicity Hardy. I'm the general counsel for Center for Human Development. I hope it's okay if I sit. I can stand if That's you would prefer nice. that. Um, I uh, am accompanied tonight by our team uh, for the redevelopment of the project. Um, I'm going to introduce them from my right. Um, over there is Jim Goodwin. He is the president and CEO of Center for Human Development. Mm -hmm. Next to Jim is Al Nardi. He is the project architect. Um, next to Al is Dan Dodge. He's our project manager. And Michael Siolek just introduced himself on Google Meet. Uh, he's one of the principals of Associated Builders. So together, Dan and Michael will speak to any questions you might have of the general contractor. Next to Dan is Tony Papa. He is the structural engineer who we uh, engaged to, to look at the structural integrity of the building. And then last but certainly not least is Jeff Kazeroid. Jeff is our director of facilities for Center for Human Development. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to talk a little bit about um, our uh, plans for the redevelopment of 55 to 69 Union Street. And um, I submitted some written materials to the commission ahead of time, but we've also prepared a PowerPoint that recapitulates some of the materials in, uh, in the materials I sent to you. I'm not great at directing PowerPoints while I'm speaking. So, um, and I'm a little disoriented with having to speak to you, but having the presentation behind me. So I'm gonna try to have eyes in the back of my head um, and Eli's gonna help me with um, the, the slides. Yeah, I'll just say there is a photo board. If that's helpful, we could put on the table. It's just sort of hard to set up with the room set up here, um, but. So we have pictures here okay. too. All right. Okay. All right. Digital it is. Perfect. So if you could start this PowerPoint line. Great. Thank you. Um, so uh, let me tell you a little bit about Center for Human Development, and uh, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to ask Jim to um, supplement anything I have to say about our organization. CHD is a human services agency that operates up and down uh, the uh, Connecticut River Valley. Um, we have behavioral health clinics. We assist victims of domestic violence. We help uh, children with behavioral health needs, um, and we operate uh, clinics um, and um, different kinds of support facilities all up and down um, Western Massachusetts and into Connecticut. Right now, we have a clinic that operates on Northampton Street on Route 5 and 10. But we've kind of outgrown that facility. And several years ago, CHD identified uh, the Manchester Hardware site as a great location uh, for uh, a new behavioral health clinic. Uh, Elon, can you unlock me up? So this is a sort of a general site plan um, for uh, 55 to 69 Union Street. So, hi. Hey, John. Hi, John. <laughs> so, I'm just going to kind of walk us right here. Um, 
This side of the plan is Union Street, and then Chapman Street is up here. So the site um, extends kind of deep into the back. Um, this is the um, existing Manchester hardware building that's on the corner of Union and Chapman. Um, oh, not quite ready. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the brick structure that we're talking about is located kind of back here. Um, CHD needs to have a modern uh, facility uh, to serve the, uh, the individuals that we're going to see at this clinic. Um, and in evaluating the structures that are there, identified the one on the corner as the one that is best suited um, to our needs. Um, the plan has undergone uh, various iterations. So this is what we have currently. It may change somewhat, but generally speaking, we're looking at about a 7,000 square foot uh, facility using the existing Manchester hardware building on the corner. Um, we identified this site in the summer of 2021 and uh, closed a couple of months later. Uh, it will serve both adults and children with mental health issues and behavioral health uh, needs. And if you could give me the second next slide. So this view of the building, um, think Al, this is Union Street here and Chapman is here. Right, it's, it's, it's Chap, Chapman's same orientation. Chapman is to the left. So, I'm sorry, Chapman is to the north. Okay. Union is to the left. Right, okay. Sorry, my mistake. This side of the clinic would um, serve children. This side of the clinic would serve the adults. So for a variety of clinical reasons, it's kind of important to have um, the um, children's services delivered in a zone that's separate from the adults. Um, in order to realize this vision, we need to take down several existing structures. This building is attached to a concrete, I don't even know how to describe it. I think maybe you can we'll do a better job, but there's a there's an extension back here and then eventually connects to the brick structure that we're talking about. As far as I know, the other structures other than the barn are not inventoried, and I don't think they fall within the um, the purview of the demolition delay ordinance. Uh, we recently finished uh, doing a financing for this project, which includes all of the construction and renovation that we're uh, going to need to do. And in in connection with that, we we notified the Mass Historical Commission of our intent to do this demolition. And the Mass Historical Commission uh, determined that there were, it was unlikely that there were any significant historical resources um, that um, would be affected by the project. After we did that work, uh, our uh, contractor applied for a demolition permit. And it was at that point that we learned that um, the that 69 Union Street was on a cultural inventory form, and that triggered the commission's review. It's my understanding, and um, the commission probably has a lot more background about this than I do, that within the last two years, the city of East Hampton did a big inventory of historic structures in and around the Main Street area. And this building um, was inventoried as part of that review. What we do know about that survey is that th this building was not prioritized for any kind of preservation and it's outside of the what they proposed as the Northampton Williston proposed historic di district. Um, I, as far as we know, the building has not been nominated to be on either the state historic register or the federal historic register. So while it is over 50 years old, 
while it did show up on the cultural inventory form and thus is appropriate for your review. Um, other bodies that have looked at it have not um, uh, identified it uh, as particularly important for, uh, for preservation. And the next slide, please. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the cultural inventory form because obviously that's one of the reasons why we're all here tonight. This is a photograph from that form, um, and um, it's, I think it's a really good depiction from the southeast <coughs> facade. You can see these modern garage doors, modern uh, window sashes, which I'm going to show you in greater detail in a few minutes. But uh, the a uh, firm that did the cultural inventory form identified the, prop the property as having been constructed in about 1909. It is not built in any particular architectural style. It was a livery, it was a barn. And so the whoever it was who originally built it didn't necessarily have particular architectural um, uh, thoughts in mind in terms of building the building. The owner was a gentleman by the name of Frank Haynes. He left the business in 1917. So the building was probably used as a livery for maybe six or seven years, something like that, less than a decade. And then sometime later, the site was bought by the folks who um, built the Manchester hardware business. I want to talk a little bit about the architectural significance of the building. So um, I'm, I'm going to see the Florida Al in just a minute, but um, I did want to show you this particular slide, which again shows these sort of modern vinyl uh, window apertures, modern uh, garage doors, and so forth. Um, the, uh, this dormer is new, there's some other things that are new, um, but Al is here really to talk a little bit of, more about um, the fact that the building doesn't really have architectural integrity. So Al, I'll just let you speak for a few minutes about that. Again, my name is Al Nardi, I'm the architect. Um, perhaps I've been also to some of my team, I am the vice chairman of the Springfield Historic Commission. So I, I came looking at this thing way back when and said, oh, cool, what can we do with this? Yeah. Um, so as, as we would architecturally any time, how does this thing affect the streetscape? Well, you can look there. You really cannot see this building from either street. So I am more than sure that there's no loss to the streetscape from the historic streetscape um, viewpoint. Uh, but um, because I, I am a preservationist, so I started walking through the building. This is way back when he was out. I could not find any architectural features that were like, wow, let's say. Uh, and, the, and the problem is, is that the building has been altered so many times with changes in openings, blocking of windows, different types of brick. Dormer was added later. The whole uh, opposite side that you're looking there is all brand new framing. The texture 111, you know, plywood on the outside. So there was not much original left, but still we walked through it. We took as many pictures as we could mostly because if we were going to try to save anything, if we could find a feature or two that I could ask the contractor to save, maybe we use it on the front of our building, be a little reminiscent of what probably could happen on the site. Um, there may be some beams that I can use, but I need to look at them, make sure they're not burned on the back because there's some that burned during a fire at one time. So there's really no heavy duty feature that I could use. However, um, I, and our structural engineer might even know, if I was to keep the building, 
that could figure a way to do it. It won't comply with earthquake codes. So this is a darn. If we do that, then I lose all the height that I need so that I can't really occupy the space. Uh, I suppose I can cut the roof off, or, you know, but that's not going to be. Um, there's a lot of deterioration. Doesn't bother me that much, but is it is the building significant enough to make some sense of spending the money to try to use the, to rehab it to something that we can't use? So that's where we stopped back then, um, and then we started looking at the other buildings right on Union Street. And even both of those, one of them really had a problem with water uh, infiltrating into the basement. I mean, so the whole site came out. Uh, so I, I made the determination, and I hate making that determination because I love really having it. Um, but there's really no alternative to the demolition other than looking to see if I can do it take some pieces and save them and use them. The other thing was, I looked as we would on the commission at Springfield, could I move it? And our structural engineer and I both agreed that, yeah, maybe we could move it someplace else on the site, but it would be a horrendous cost. And what are we saving? We're saving something that's been bastardized so many times that looked like crazy. Uh, that was that. And then, and finally, was there some significant door light fixture or something, and they're all gone. Um, other than the um, some of the heavy beams, the heavy timber, some of them are pretty cool. But I think we can use those maybe near the entrance. Uh, and that was the reason why I said to CHD, if it was in my backyard, I would say that it was a cool shed. But that was about that. Because that's what it was. It was used as a storage shed for the lumber company. And I don't know who changed the walls, I don't know who locked up the windows, I don't know who changed all the brick surfaces on the back, but you know, it's it's full. Um, so that was my determination, and that's my my input to you. From, from the preservation kind of the character, uh, I wish I could, but I can't. So why don't we just go through some of the other photos? So it has there they um they illustrate some of Al's points. One of the things you might have seen in the uh, earlier photograph is that there's a very sloping topography to the site, um, and so the water is flow and it's all hardscape. There's no there's no there's nothing there to absorb stormwater runoff. Um, so whatever doesn't get caught in the catch basin is going to be running down the driveway, essentially. And what you can see is here about 18 inches of uh, mold on the exterior. Um, and that's just a feature of the fact that um, the, the topography causes the water to run into the building. And there is has been some pretty substantial water damage um, over uh, over time to the building. Uh, next slide, please. So these are new features. This dormer, you know, is the exterior is plywood that's been framed and is new, um, as is the uh, chimney. I'm not sure what that chimney would do. I haven't been able to figure that out. <laughs> Maybe they had a wood burning stove. They, they, there was a wood burning stove back there. Maybe that's what caused the fire. I don't know if it was a power stove or a wood burning stove. There was a fire. Uh, we're not quite sure when this happened, but there was a fire because we, we've seen some evidence of fire damage to some of the joists and the supporting columns. Next slide, please. This, is, this shows that. Um, I'm not like a real construction guy, so maybe Dan, you can explain to the commission what, what they're seeing in that slide. Sure. This shows uh, an old column and beam. There is a fire, you can see a nail, a nail, fire continued 
this is on the first floor in the basement where you have the exposed joists, you have charred off joists as well. Looks like they tried to cut it. Why, I don't know, but that's the purpose of those nails. And then they somehow tried fastening in that piece again, which has continued to be charred. And what you see there is not like it kills or bends fire uh, smoke sealant. They use just regular, regular paint. But this occurs in several locations. This here just shows separation from an undersized column and two uh, beams just or joists put together, not fastened, screwed, or secured in any way to one another. Thanks, Sam. So um, this slide shows some, ele uh, some elements of um, settlement of the brick. Again, it's on, the building is built on a slope. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a little hard to see. Can, is there any way you can blow that up a little bit, Eli? Sure. But you can see that the bricks, look, the bricks are not, they're sagging, okay? So what we're seeing here is that these bricks are not supporting the load of the weight above it. Um, and actually, Dan was out of the site uh, today, and they ran a plumb line from the top of the building down. And, uh, you know, it's that confirms that, that the building facade is bulging. In a couple areas where they struck down a line, by the time it reaches a flush point foundation wall to the top of the brick, the, the string line is uh, at a minimum two inches off of the wall. So somewhere, and, and to dig from the big exactly where, but you can visually see it, mm -hmm. but to try to capture in a picture other than a string line, it's really hard to, oh, it's definitively. So that's why we didn't have a picture. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is kind of an interesting build a uh, uh, view of the, of the Eastern facade because it kind of shows us all of the different brick that has been used over time. It, it would be hard, I think, to even figure out what the original brick is. It looks like this here might have been an opening perhaps for the coach or the carriages that were being stored on site. We've got this, which is obviously a door that's been bricked in with modern brick. And, and in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with you know, apertures being filled in, but every change that's been made to the building has caused sort of a, a further deterioration of the original historic intrinsic value of the building. And I, sure. And I think that probably is very significant because it just hit me that that's probably one of the reasons why it's not on the list of what should be preserved. Because so many changes have been made. That makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. Okay. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit more, expand a little bit more on Al's comments about what we thought about in terms of trying to preserve the building. It can't support current codes for live loads, snow loads, wind loads, or seismic loads. So structurally, the, the building was probably fine when it was built at the turn of the 20th century for its use, but it's not capable of uh, being used in a, in a modern context now. Uh, to bring it back to current codes, and for us to occupy it, we would essentially have to take the entire building down and start. Um, we, because it's a public building, we would have to install an elevator. There are just major, major uh, challenges for CHD or anybody to use this building. We were not the only group that was interested in buying the Manchester hardware site. I think 
you know, the, the folks who have, you know, the hangar restaurants in Northampton and Amherst, and I think there's one in East London, I'm not quite sure. Is there one in East London? Westfield. They were interested in the site and they would have the same issues that we would, anybody would. Um, and it's really a function of the topography of the site and the fact that this structure was just not built to 21st century codes. So we're here tonight to, uh, to explain our view that the building doesn't have um, historic value and that um, the commission should make a determination that um, our project is not going to uh, be detrimental to the historic resources for the uh, city of East Hampton. Um, I'd like Jim to just say a few more words about our vision for the site and how we want to uh, use the site to serve the, the folks in East Hampton and uh, why we'd like you to allow us to proceed. So the Center for Human Development, CHD, has been providing services in the Pioneer Valley for the last 50 years. And um, we provide a variety of different types of services, but one of the main services we provide are our major primary care services. Uh, so what would happen here, it would be a clinic that would serve as children and adults uh, in integrate behavioral health and some primary care. Uh, there would be psychiatry, uh, counseling, nursing services, that sort of thing. So we both individual therapy and psychiatric services would be offered in the building. In a variety of education services um, for all of these reasons we think that um, the demolition of this building would not be detrimental to the historic resources of the city of east tampa you have many many beautiful historic structures um, here in the city but we just don't think that this building kind of rises to that um, and I think it's significant that the city's own consultant didn't prioritize it uh, for preservation. So we are here to answer your questions. That concludes our uh, presentation. And I'm sure you have things you'd like to ask us and we're here to, to respond to that. Okay. Thank you for the very inviting presentation. That was one of the best ones I've seen. Thank you. So, uh, to open up for the mission, any questions? First site plan that you showed us. Sure. Let's. Can we go back to that? Yes. I noticed there's a lot of green areas um, next to the building. What What is your intention for the rest of the landscape there? So this is conceptually where we've started. I think we're starting the site engineering now. One of the things that we will have to do is uh, make sure that the site as, develop, as we redevelop it reduces and does not increase stormwater discharge. Um, so um, what we are trying to accomplish is create some um, green space. Green space helps to absorb stormwater. Um, so um, we think that um, this is going to assist with that. I believe that this strip along Union Street is part of a larger project to improve the streetscape along um, Union Street. And in fact, the planning department contacted CHD about nine months ago to get easements in order to be able to um, uh, I think it's sort of improving the, the uh, upgrading the sewer system here and then improving um, the sort of the green space along the Union Street corridor. And then, you know, again, this is conceptual, but the idea is we're going to develop this parking area here and um, provide some um, islands both for traffic management and for um, and, uh, water capture. Right now, if the building is not touching part of the real estate, it's paved. 
um, with the redevelopment, um, the city of East Hampton does have zoning requirements that uh, the developer or the owner, CHD, would have to abide by minimum uh, green space impervious areas. So this would meet or exceed the open space requirements. So again, this is conceptual to show how it is going from a sheet of asphalt to properly placing not only for view, but for, you know, some, um, I believe City of East Hampton also says in a park area, you need so many trees, green space within so many areas. So this touches on some of that and how it would be addressed. I do want to say this is very preliminary because we just finished the surveying of the site. So yeah. we're going to be working with uh, the civil engineers to um, to develop this more fully. I had another question about some of the information that came through one of the things that you sent us. Eli. Sure. It showed the front of the building of the, of the main store building uh, taken down going back, but then it showed a section of it that wasn't going to be taken down. Yeah, that's, that's, accurate. That's, that's an accurate description to yeah. what we received. Yeah. Yep, I can uh, work on finding that for you. That was a little confusing in terms of the, the diagram as to why you're yeah. wishing to look it up. Yeah, it looks like a, a cross section of all of them looking at it from the Indian Street. Yeah. Uh, Part, part of part of what is there would still be standing on the right and on the left, and then it was being plowed through straight. Yeah. And being so, really familiar with the store, it's my favorite store in town. There's no one about it, too, I could not understand. Do you think that there was, a, there was an alleyway between two of the younger company buildings? That was closed in with some concrete, concrete block. Yeah. And the drawing was not, I would not say, yeah. it was clear enough to. Is it? So, could you point me in the direction of what you were looking for? It was one of the first emails. Is there any way you could pull up an aerial of the site on Google Maps? Sure. Because there are five buildings which make up the assemblage of the current and I can walk through uh, in brief but so maybe it'll maybe you can point me to that <clears throat> kind of in order on how the buildings were built <clears throat> Oh, that's right. right. It's terrific. So this is yeah. the original building. Uh, that is the part. That was building one. Building two is this building here. Building three, they built the connector, which is along the property line, and actually joined those two buildings. So it's a truck stop. Building four is the building CHC would like to utilize. And then building five, you can see the separation. There was an alleyway between the two buildings. So what they did is they ended up roofing over it. So when you were in the uh, hardware store, you would have to go up the ramp. Yeah. And on both sides, if you went in the door, you could see the brick and the foundation wall. Yes, yeah. So it was five structures. So well, that's a perfect representation. Okay. In the information we got, what it looked like was that this part would be removed, but this part would be left. That's exactly how it is. Is it is? Is that they have the papers in so. Oh, is this uh is, is what it, you're thinking of? Yeah. Is this is just the marketing deal? No, sure. it was it was yeah, just not it was an overdone view. That's the one. That's the that, that, yeah. one. Thank you, Eli. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, so it shows. I don't know. I didn't send that, so I'm I'm not sure what. Oh, yeah, it is. I don't know what that is. I think that um, Jimmy made this, so I mean, this is a good thing to have have a clear understanding of. Is this not what you're? That's you have in mind. 
No, no that's okay. not even our work product. I don't yeah. know who. Yeah. That, that was very yeah. confusing. Okay. Yeah. So I think that this is confusing. something Jamie made. Um, what does it say? It says, what it says, separate and demo all this, which is this building in the barn in the back and this connector thing here. This portion remains. I don't know. No, no. Who said that? But that's not the point. Okay. okay. This this part of the building is going to be kept. All of this stuff back here goes. Yeah. In that little section on the right, also. Yes. yes. That says yes. this portion remains. Okay. Yes. So that's all. Just the corner, the newer building. Right. Yep. It would be everything there over, because this here is that alleyway. With, with this particular photograph, can you show us that your property line does go all the way back to the red barn? The the property line follows back here yep. to here, and then follows. Okay, so does that follow up? And in an all actuality, back <laughs> here, it comes out to the driveway. It comes back, so there's a little uh, one, 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 one fingerling out to, but not that drivable. No. no. Uh, so that will all be parking. Is this a residential or just day program for adults and children? Just day. Interestingly enough, I was on the historical commission when the building was removed at this section. The next place. section. Yeah. This is a three or four story building. Right here? No, no the other side. No, the other side. side. The building you, you intend to keep. Right. There was a, a a beautiful old building yeah. at some yeah. point had been that was our was, state commission. That, that was the building that we saw that had been moved. That was on the yeah. You know, when we when we applaud when we submitted a project notific notification for to Mass Historic, we saw that same yeah. thing and we didn't know it was hard it to tell whether it was on the inventory or not the it was just it was taken down was that the owners of manchester's had gone in and removed part of the floor or part of the ceiling between the first and second floor and made a balcony and they had cut a lot of the beams and hadn't supported them so the building was starting to pay. That's what exists in building, building yeah. number two that I were yeah, that right. It makes there. sense because a lot of it's now. Yeah. There's a lot of strange work on it just chopped it off. <laughs> it just chopped off the beams and there was a balcony and, and they, there were a lot of appliances set up from there. But the building was starting to settle, so we didn't have a choice. But. No give them permission to remove that building and then this building is built after that. So your intention when the buildings are taken down to fill that lot so it's basically level? Um, no, no. Um, it would be to redevelop the site uh, to obtain the proper green space parking and stuff like that. Because the okay, site well, there's a dip there, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, or does it go all the way back? It does, yeah. it, 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 and that would be part of our civil engineers balance yeah. to, to do that because we couldn't wall the whole site, then we would end up with walls all the way around. So a lot of it will be accommodated with proper cuts to fill on the site. Okay. I'm trying to get two parking levels. Um, not sure. Yeah. So there will there won't be any other building, uh, like. No additional, yeah, no additional actual buildings used in that structure on the left. Right. Correct. There's no plans for a new building of any sort of that side. The, uh, I realize, said that the dormer is not original, but it's, it, it, it seems like that's probably old enough, like, because of the, the functionality of the beam that comes out, like it was clearly used, it's to, not used to, to, for a place for the lumber or something. Yeah, so I don't know if you had a sense of it was liberated to use it for hitting. Yeah, that's what we're curious to so, know, like how how old that part is. Twenty. Yeah. 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 If I had to guess, it was that in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, I would say something. And what's that new inside? Yeah, yeah, the frame is, is 
is newer material. It's all just new. Then we have some pictures of the inside frame on the back. Do, but I'm not sure they are in this PowerPoint. Yeah, it's framed out by two guys. Well, this, this this is sort of contemporary. If you go to that slide, this is not this is not that feature, but it might have been done around the same time. Hang on one second, bring it up. Okay, there we go. So. This area is the framing for this gable. And it seems like the dormer might have been done contemporaneously with that, just in terms of looking right. at the construction of the materials. Hard to, it's a little hard to say. You have to say, I think it, it is a loss to lose another brick building in our town. Um, it is, it's, it is it's, visible it's, from the map. It is. Well, I'll say that, um, first of all, thanks for a thorough investigation of the property. That's, that's what we hope for. We yeah. appreciate, especially looking into you know, what points of interest or salvageable elements uh, there might be. I happen to have asked while it was open uh, the hardware store. I played my historic commission credential and uh, got to go in and take a tour of that space and found it similarly to be old, but not, um, first of all, it wasn't well constructed. That's the way I would put it. Is it wasn't it was not well made, and I didn't find any. I got to look around and didn't find anything that I thought was particularly significant or interesting, had some kind of historic significance that would cause me pause at this time. Um, it was a barn, you know, and one that had been, you know, hacked together and re things had been, you know redone and reworked and saw a lot of it contemporary and even the old stuff while interesting. And I think if you say this some of the timbers, that would be fantastic. And, and that um, I wouldn't intention in any way to reuse. I, though I agree, you know, I think uh, red brick is the kind of thing that eventually is going to be <laughs> looking to salvage all of But I, it was a Building that I would think is the kind of structure that I personally I I can agree that I would see any way that significantly preserved. It's not that consistent. The bricks they're all different. It's yeah, the parts of the building. There's a lot of different bricks. Yeah, yeah. different bonding patterns. Yeah. and I noticed the water damage too yeah. with, with the way that it had been asphalted inside and such. You know, it's not. It's not to code, it's not going to be able to be made to code. So, yeah, for what it's worth, I concur that it's, yeah, it's not, yeah, it would be nice to, to have something to keep there. But, uh, yeah. Anybody else have any other questions, comments? I also appreciate there is any way to salvage what you can to show off with any, any uh, nod to what was there. Um, that would be meaningful to the people who've lived in this now for generations. And maybe even some the entrance to say, you know, yeah. this, this thing, this column, this. Being that we yeah. have, here's the phone, here's what yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you we clearly have your your, your shops and that yeah. you know, so, Springfield. So we, we redid the uh, we redid a, a, a historical bank building on State Street and got on board because we, we purposely did that. It was we turned into a community music and the whole thing was marble. 
Not one screw or hole was drilled through that marble. The whole thing was put together intentionally. All these, wow. so it was wow. amazing. The nice. contractor was amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So yes, uh, we still have that in our head. Right. We just haven't picked what we can use yet because sure. I want to be careful about going and having my people do there because it is not safe. Sure. So once he stabilizes it, then I said, okay, well then come with me. Why are you going to stabilize it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what we do? <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Right now, we can sit down and do we feel like we want to make a decision? Should we open up to public comment? Not that I think anyone. I think there was any public here, was there? Still. We will open public comment. Yeah. Public comment's open. All right. No one wishes to speak. Okay. Can we close public comments? Yep. Uh. Do you have any other issues? Yeah, sure. I don't accept the proposal of demolition. Our feelings are without protest. Good, second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And we are uh, hopeful that, um, you know, we're going to continue to serve this community. Um, and what we really want is uh, opening a uh, welcoming space um, for the people we serve. And uh, this is going to take us a long way to, to that goal. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Eli. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. So, Mike, uh, just for people who might watch the recording, um, there's a 20 day appeal period where people can appeal this decision if they feel aggrieved and um, uh, file with the city clerk or the request for appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, which okay. so, put well, actually, in, but... you're uh, haven't closed the hearing yet, have we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> to approve the, the demo, yes, uh, permit. And so we will now officially close the uh, the, the hearing. Yep. And, uh, the items not recently anticipated. Okay. So, explain the appeal process. So any person agreed by the termination of the commission may file with the city clerk a written request to for appeal in the zoning board of appeals within 20 days of the date of this decision. Okay, so with that being said, and we are all done with the meeting, I have minutes from October 12th that we need to approve. I didn't get the public hearing uh, minutes done yet from 26th. Give me a few minutes to read them. And then we have a motion to either approve or correct or whatever. Are they drinking champagne? For October 12th. Yes. I was on here. So I'll <laughs> A second, and all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Uh, the minutes are approved. Items not reasonably anticipated by the commission. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't think we have anything. I, 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 have, I have something. <laughs> I, just <make> sure. <laughs> I just need to uh, make sure that I'm communicating from 
the CPA side okay. that uh, one of the topics that's on the agenda is that we are looking to assist with the repair of the clock. But one of the big issues of contention is, uh, yeah, sorry, the congregational, right, the, the, the town clock, as I understand it, is what I refer to. Right. And there is debate about proof of ownership that it really belongs to the town. The assumption has been, and legend has it, that the town owns the clock while the church owns the rest of the building. But in absence of any verifying certificates, at the moment, um, the chair of the CPA has asked that we get consultation from the council on the matter and verify that we're in good standing if we do it, since um, recently ACPA got sued for uh, providing funds for um, private entities like church. Yeah, so so trying to dot the I's, cross the T's. And so just feel like I have not really, I feel like I've represented the commission accurately in saying that we've discussed this before and we support and have in fact approved funding of repair of the town clock before on occasion and we've all toured it and we'll consider it historically significant and that we verify we are behind 100% any protection and upkeep of it. The whole thing though at the moment is kind of contingent on just so you're in the loop here, us finding ways to verify that the town has ownership and is in proper standing to spend town taxpayer money on it. Okay, so, have your question. Yeah, please. The answer he had proof, didn't he? Uh, he may now. I hadn't heard that there was any since the last meeting. Last last meeting, uh, I understood we were still seeking okay. that absolute approval. I was just wondering if it came through or not. I, I assume not because we yeah. talked to I, I suppose I should also maybe throw in there too as well that I've received my request that um, did I wish to continue to represent the historic commission on the CPA and. I would ask if everyone is satisfied that, that I was good to do that. that. Yeah, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else that we didn't anticipate? I didn't anticipate that. Question. Yeah. The one who repaired it off, the guy that retired was Jeff Ketchup. Is he still on the intention? Is that he repaired it or did you get an outside clock? That's not been determined. It's it's still being debated because we're we talking about the face and the hands. Well, that too. That too, but that's actually not the primary concern at the moment. It was the mechanism that was currently in question, and then we have brought up because I brought up from our meetings the notion that had been suggested that maybe lowering the mechanism, which is right. interesting and unique and a valuable antique lowering that for display and us you know using the contemporary mechanisms that make the hands keep the proper time and make the chime chime in fact part of the issue is we don't want to hit the bell anymore the big heavy bell that's up there um used to swing and now the way we want to do it is rather than swinging to make the cleaner strike we we have a mallet that we want to just <laughs> And strike it with because it's more structurally sound and safe and in fact there's even discussion of maybe the, you know changing that up so so the question is how much preservation which parts to preserve but the idea as i understand it is function to bring it back to full function when you say a mallet do you mean like a mechanical mallet or is someone going up there and swinging a mallet? No, mechanical mallet, okay. yeah. Yeah. And I said that can be a fun thing for people <laughs> like yeah. to go up there and swing it, but I guess not. Yeah, because it's a pretty good climb up there too. Yeah, it would be yeah, like a bell yeah. cranger. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like and, and I suppose cool. since we're on the topic, I want to verify because I, I think in that meeting I voiced my support for, I don't know how others feel about this, I know that it's always um, preferable in perfect circumstances to strike a bell, but because of the 
safety issues and the costs and expense, I personally know there are a lot of bells that are now a speaker that is playing the sound of a bell. And while I volunteered that under these circumstances, I would even suggest we sample our own, the actual bell. So we're actually playing the sound of that bell that could be done, but that it's maybe a speaker and that the whole issue of safety and the, the issue of the bell that as far as I, as a member of the commission, was concerned, and the CPA, and I, I'm okay with that kind of change. Like the hands don't have to be driven by old, you know, pendulum-driven mechanisms. You can use modern, as long as from the outside everything looks the same and operates the same. You put screen, TV screens on four sides. Well, so see, that's, where I start to, that's where I might start to argue there. Actually, yeah. Not, not it listen. Looks like the milk either way comes Yeah, right? yeah, that's that's the thing, right? Yeah, there is a line, but yeah, that's why I bring it up. So everybody is cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Schedule next meeting. We have December fourteenth as the second Wednesday. I have a, another commitment on that night, so I might not be able to make it. Do you want to schedule for a different night, or hopefully there's no other. It might be a good idea to schedule over email just because even if we schedule now, there could be a conflict okay. with another committee. Um, we could come up with something, it just might, we, there might not be a space. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. Well, I'm just, you know, everybody wanted, can you do a doodle poll? Sure. Why don't we do that? All right. Everybody on board for that? Okay. Yeah, sounds yeah, good. Before, right? And that way we can get pick a date when everybody's available. Yeah, if, if we need 14, that I think. 14? Yeah. 14, 19, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if we need a date around that. I, can wait. Yeah, I mean, we could either go a Wednesday before, the Wednesday after, or whatever. But you know, if we do a Google poll, we'll just sure. get the are other nights of the week options or sure no okay it all depends on which they are you know so i mean that would be right hard. for me preferably tuesday yeah yeah works yeah. so prior wednesday or something yeah do it yesterday <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah we can go with the good first one yeah have we closed our meeting and stopped our recording? No, yeah. you are still meeting and recording. Anyways, uh, we will do the demo poll and uh, get back to you on that. And we just need one more motion for adjournment. We adjourn. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Good meeting, Joe. Thank you, Eli. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.